Hi, third graders. Welcome to lesson 27, The Power of Magnets. I think you're going to like this one, guys. All right, let's get started. Chances are there's a magnet on your refrigerator. It's probably holding up a photo, a drawing, or some other piece of paper. Have you noticed that the magnet sticks to the refrigerator, but not to the paper? Do you know why? Hmm. And our little graphic down here is telling us this refrigerator magnet is actually pulling on the refrigerator. How interesting. A magnet attracts objects with iron in them. The refrigerator door is probably made of steel, which is made from iron. Paper has no iron in it. That's why the magnet doesn't stick to it. If you ever spill a box of pins, a good way to pick them up is with a magnet. The magnet will pull the pins toward it. Most of the pins will stick to the ends or poles of the magnet. That's because the poles are the most powerful part of a magnet. All right, and then we can see here, these are the poles or the ends of the magnet, and we can see all of those things that have iron in them that are being picked up by that magnet. Now that looks like a pretty powerful magnet to be able to pick up that amount of things, right guys? It says the power of a magnet is strongest at its poles, whether it is a bar magnet or a horseshoe magnet. We can tell this is a horseshoe magnet, of course. And then down here, we have some bar magnets. Our little caption tells us some magnets are bars. Other magnets are shaped like horseshoes. So we can see like this one is like a bar magnet and our horseshoe magnet. All right, our next heading says poles and fields. A magnet has a north pole and a south pole. Hmm, I know something else that has a north pole and a south pole. <laughs> what happens if you try to touch the north pole of one magnet to the south pole of another magnet? They'll stick together. Opposite poles attract each other. Will two North Poles or two South Poles stick together? No, they won't. In fact, they will repel or push each other away. Like Poles repel each other. This special force that attracts or repels is called magnetic force. A magnet's force is not felt just at its poles. A magnet creates a whole area or field of force around it. Do you want to see a magnetic field? Sprinkle iron fillings around a magnet. The iron fillings will form a pattern of lines. They show the magnetic field where the magnet's force works. The lines are closest together at the poles where the force is strongest. Okay, and this graphic is showing us it tells us a magnetic field is invisible, but these iron pieces show where it is. So we can see the pattern of lines that are being formed here by the poles of this magnet, and that is the magnetic field. Okay, and then down here we have another lovely graphic, and it says the opposite poles, black and red, of these magnets come together. The like poles stay apart. So. Over here, we have two black and red magnets, and they are the opposite poles, and see how they're going toward each other? So it says, bar magnets with their opposite poles colored black and red. Black and red poles of the magnets pull together. Red and red poles stay apart. So we can see over here, the ones that are the same, they repel or push each other away. Interesting. All right, electromagnets, turn them on, turn them off. Some magnets can be turned on and off. If you need a magnet whose force you can control like this, you want an electromagnet. In an electromagnet, wire is wrapped around metal. Electricity can flow through the wire. When you turn the electricity on, the metal becomes a magnet. It is an electromagnet. When you turn the electricity off, the metal stops being a magnet. Junkyards use huge electromagnets to move old cars. 
A special crane turns electricity on. That turns a core of metal into a magnet. The car sticks to the magnet and the crane moves the car with ease. Then the electricity is turned off and the magnet turns back into plain metal. The car drops into place. That is pretty cool. <laughs> All right, we have a graphic, um, a picture, photograph it looks like down at the bottom and it has a caption with it that says electromagnets are useful for two reasons. They can be powerful enough to move a car and they can be turned on and off. All right, and then we have a nice little sidebar over here. See this, guys? And it is showing us a photograph, and underneath it, it says Michael Faraday's electric idea. In 1820, people first learned about electromagnets. That year, one scientist saw a magnetic field produced when electricity ran through a metal wire. His observation made another scientist, Michael Faraday, curious. Faraday asked himself, if electricity can produce a magnetic field, can a magnetic field produce electricity? Faraday tested his idea. In one experiment, he moved a magnet through a coil of wires. Electricity was produced. In another, he moved the coil of wires around a magnet. Again, electricity was produced. Faraday's work led to two important inventions the electric generator, and the electric motor. The electric generator produces electricity with a magnetic field. The electric motor uses electricity to run things. Now, people could use magnets to make electricity do their work for them. That's awesome. Electric generators. Generate means produce or make. An electric generator uses a magnetic field and moving wire coils to produce electricity, just as Michael Faraday discovered. A power company near your home builds generators. Electricity from these generators comes through power lines into your home. It lets you turn on lights, watch TV, and listen to music. Think of all the times you use electricity. You are using electricity produced in a magnetic field. Every time you turn on a light switch, electricity comes through a wire. Every time you plug in a cord, electricity comes through the wire. Remember, too, that electricity creates a magnetic field. So every time electricity comes through a wire in your home, it produces a magnetic field. How many magnetic fields do you think are in your home? And look at that photograph, guys. It says the magnetic field is inside this huge generator. And that is a huge generator. Wow. Okay, electric motors. Some electricity that comes into your home is used to power electric motors. An electric motor uses electricity to run things. When you plug in and turn on a hairdryer or a fan, an electric motor makes it work. Some electric motors get their power from batteries. When you put a battery in a watch or a CD player, an electric motor makes it work. Think about all the toys and tools in your home that have electric motors. Inside each electric motor is a magnet and its magnetic field. How many magnetic fields in electric motors do you think are in your home? And this page has two graphics for us giving us some information. This one tells us batteries like these give power to electric motors. And then down here, it says, remember that magnets are not just on your refrigerator door. Magnets help provide the power you use every day. Anyone have a television like that in your house? <laughs> Electromagnets and you. You may not know it, but you live with electromagnets all around you. Here are just a few examples. <laughs> Ding dong. Pressing a doorbell turns an electromagnet on. The magnet makes a striker or arm move. It hits a bell and the doorbell rings. Wow. Did you know that electromagnets help you dry your hair? Any machine with an electric motor uses an electromagnet to turn working parts on and off. So a blow dryer, vacuum cleaner, refrigerator, washing machine, and radio all have electromagnets. 
electromagnets even help you have fun. A computer uses electromagnets too. Electromagnets help store information on the computer's hard drive so you can find it later. Music pumps out of a stereo speakers because of electromagnets. Inside, the cone has a coil attached to it. Around that is a magnet. Electricity creates a magnetic field. This vibrates or shakes the coil. The cone moves too. That's what makes the sounds you hear. All right, for this lesson, we get to look at two poems also. Our first one is called Science Fair Project by Carol Diggory Shields. And it says, purpose, the purpose of my project this year is to make my brother disappear. Hypothesis, the world would be a better place if my brother vanished without a trace. Materials, three erasers, white out, disappearing ink, one younger brother, one kitchen sink. Procedure, chop up the erasers, add the white out and the ink, rub it on the brother while he's standing in the sink. Results, the kid was disappearing. I had almost proved my theorem when all at once my mom came home and made me reappear him. Conclusion, Experiment of failure. My brother is still here, but I'm already planning for the science fair next year. That's a silly poem. Okay, and then our next one is called Magnet, and that looks very familiar, doesn't it? A red horseshoe magnet with some of its red paint chipped. Hmm. This one is by Valerie Worth. This small flat horseshoe is sold for a toy. We are told that it will pick up pins, and it does, time after time. Later it lies about, getting its red paint chipped, being offered pins less often, until at last we leave it alone. Then it leads its own life, trading secrets with the North Pole, reading invisible messages from the sun. Notice these two poems are very different, guys. So notice how... The author of this poem decided that she wanted it to rhyme. We all noticed that, right, while I was reading it? So this one rhymes. Did you notice any rhyming over here on this one? No. So a lot of times when we think of poetry, we think of it having to rhyme, but that is actually not the case. Poems do not have to rhyme. And poets pretty much can arrange a poem any way they like. Isn't that interesting? Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning all about magnets, electromagnets, and magnetic fields. I know I sure did. I'll see you soon, guys.